Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be talking about my progress over the past 12 months. And believe me, the concept of pretending the last 12 months never happened has occurred to me. However, from a fitness standpoint, it really wasn't too bad. So let's get into it and see if there's anything that I went through this year that might be able to help you uh, this upcoming year. So first, let's talk about what the original plan for 2020 was. Based on my results from 2019 at Bloomsday and Tough Mudder, I was really hoping to add to my events calendar this year and improve my overall performance at everything. As the base requirement for all the events was going to be endurance capacity, I knew that my primary focus was going to be on cardiovascular work. By February, I had registered for two shorter obstacle course race events here that were going to be in the Spokane area, and I was about to register for Bloomsday and the Tough Mudder Seattle late September, October, and that was going to give me a really nice May to October uh, event season. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. By April, I was running two to three days a week for an average of about three and a half to six miles per run. So that's a nice base. And on top of that, I was doing one to two days extra of strength training on top of that. So altogether, four to five days per week of purposeful exercise training, which is good and that's what you want. Strength training at home, I find difficult to get motivated to do. It's just hard for me to go down in the basement and work out. I did, during that lockdown, I did take the a TRX from here and I set it up in my garage with some kettlebells and that felt like I was going somewhere to work out, which, I don't know, psychologically seemed better. So if that's something you want to try, you know, maybe, you know, having it in that hidden basement back bedroom maybe isn't the best place for your home exercise equipment. Maybe you need to move it somewhere else uh, where you get a little more sunlight, uh, a little more uh, interaction with it, uh, maybe. Uh, it's a good way to kind of, you know, trick yourself into being motivated to work out. One thing I did do during that first lockdown, though, was I tried to work on or maintain my flexibility and mobility. Uh, since you're not getting up and going many places a lot, uh, then maintaining some degree of flexibility and movement capacity is important. If you're like me in this regard and you find working out at home difficult, try getting on the floor and stretching for 15 minutes. It feels pretty great, so it's self-reinforcing. Then, add in one or two bodyweight exercises every week, and it becomes a good way to uh, get yourself into an exercise session. All that cardio would be made a lot easier if I wasn't carrying around a bunch of extra weight. Not that I'm huge, but at 5'10 five and, five, and a half and 201, uh, it's just extra weight that I don't need to be carrying. So, uh, I started tracking my food and uh, my expenditure uh, my caloric expenditure using my smartwatch and uh, my fitness pal so the Garmin smartwatch tracked my expenditure and then I was tracking my food intake with the my fitness pal on my phone and between the two of them I was able to maintain a really good uh, consistent calorie deficit uh, every week and over 12 weeks I lost 19 pounds so that was great if that seems overwhelming uh, start with just one specific meal time that you can improve on or you can just forget about portions and track contents. Uh, change what you eat first and then worry about how much of it later. Uh, or you could forget about food entirely and just focus on your expenditure and just uh, keep targeting a daily expenditure level that's above what your base caloric intake is, should be. Uh, eventually, you'll either make a change or you'll find that you need some added piece of information that will help get you uh, to the change that you want to make. Uh, but, you know, it's just starting somewhere is, is really what's important. Uh, be kind to yourself. Uh, tracking food can bring on feelings of failure and shame. Push past them and, and keep your focus on the next meal, not the last one. By fall, Tough Mudder was gone, but uh, Bloomsday's virtual race day had come. I put together some really good, strong runs in August and uh, September that were nice and long. And so I was feeling pretty confident that I'd put, be able to post a really good time. I thought about going to the actual Bloomsday course and just running it anyway. And normally I don't really get concerned about uh, ex, you know, COVID exposure when I'm out, outside running. But 
I was kind of afraid that a lot of people would want to do that and that would just be something I wasn't going to be comfortable with. So instead, uh, I took the elevation changes from the actual Blues Day course and I plugged those into the Garmin website uh, tool and uh, created a, a race course around just around my neck of the woods that uh, approximated the contours of the actual Blues Day race quite nicely. It worked flawlessly uh, and since it was synced to my watch, uh, I didn't have to memorize the course, it would just buzz me when I had to make a left or a right and I'd just glance down and then make the change. In the end, I had a really great finish time, uh, besting the uh, past, past several years by about 10 minutes. Uh, I averaged around 9 minutes and 30 per mile, which for me is really good, uh, over 7.5 miles uh, to maintain that, that pace was really, really good for me. I also use this tool to find you routes others have taken and upload it to the site. It's a good feature and I recommend if you have a smartwatch, whether it's Garmin or not, that you try out their web-based features. If you don't have a smartwatch, it's no big deal, uh, but make a point to go somewhere other than your usual 3.47 mile walking route that you do in your neighborhood all the time. Uh, changing the scenery once in a while is a good way to get motivated for a good cardio session. That brings me to our second closure this fall. Uh, I had scaled back on the running to just two sessions per week and then had bumped my strength sessions to two to three times per week to maintain that four to five days uh, of purposeful exercise. By the end of November, I was doing pretty well with the three main compound lifts, the squat, the deadlift, and the bench press. I don't lift heavy per se, but as a target, my goal was to do three reps at 20% over my body weight. This is not that. To be honest though, by December, uh, I didn't really want to lift weights anymore. Uh, I was pretty depressed uh, for exercise in general. Uh, you know, the world, the election, uh, the virus, uh, the closure of our business again, uh, virtual school, uh, it had all pretty much drained me and uh, the idea of just dragging myself out that it just to come down to an empty studio where I'm used to seeing people every day just was kind of a reminder that you know things weren't great and uh, it was really hard to, to, to stay up with that so uh, I went back to kind of the base that I set up all year long and I just went back outside and uh, just bumped so for December I bumped it back up to three times a week of running um, and then just would do whatever else I could in between uh, even if that was just stretching so uh, but it was great uh, I actually had a great month uh, I, I did do uh, average uh, three times per week uh, and I hit a 50 mile target for the month of December uh, despite all the you know dark weather and all that kind of stuff uh, so that was pretty cool and then you know on top of it you know I had this dumb little uh, Garmin badge for getting 50 miles in December so it's just a silly thing to keep you motivated but I, I don't know I liked it so flexibility is something I'm always working on whether it's physical or psychological I'm not great at either um, and I know that uh, the point is to keep working on it uh, keep moving uh, failure is actually an option in life uh, because it necessitates an attempt. Uh, looking ahead towards 2021, I'm really hoping that my event schedule will be able to come back uh, so my training focus can come back. Uh, however, it may not, and if that's the case, then I've built up a lot of practice at being flexible. Uh, so that's my year in a nutshell. Uh, hopefully I've given you a few nuggets uh, to help carry you uh, through any rough spots you might have in the upcoming year. Uh, my name is Jason, this is Lifter and Repeat. Uh, no matter what you do, remember, uh, a year from now, you'll wish you'd started today. So hit that uh, like and subscribe button and see you next time.